Let's take a look at a couple of things in Camtasia 2021. This isn't going to be an exhaustive kind of deal. It's just a quick sneak peek of a few of the features. I think I'm going to pick like four of my favorites and just kind of knock them real quick. So let's hit a couple things, shall we? Here on the timeline, I got a couple of assets. Let's stretch this out just a little bit. There we go. I got a picture here. I got a picture here. It could be video clips. You know the drill. Anything you got on the screen here. One of the new features are transitions. I'll ask the question, how many of you think that the vast majority, or the majority even, of the Camtasia transitions are, I don't know, how shall I put this, lame, oh. very old and dated looking? They added the very cool whip spin in one of the uh, versions, 2018 I think, but in this new version, there are about a hundred new ones and they are freaking awesome. <laughs> I'll let a couple roll here. Uh, I'm not even sure what that one was called. And let's see here. The other kind of interesting thing you can do here is notice as I move my cursor across the transition I get like a preview. Okay, so you can preview them. This is an animated mosaic and I'm going to test a few of these just to show you. And if you didn't know this, one way that you can replace a transition between two clips is you don't have to delete this first. Just grab another one, drop it on top. Okay, so now I've changed the transition. Very sweet, very cool. And these just go on and on, right? There are just tons of them. Here's a blur offset. So the transitions have just gotten a whole bunch more and wickedly cooler. Oh, that's kind of cool. A blur spin. Let's try that. Really nice. I like it. So that's some of the eye candy. Some of the fun. Lots of new transitions. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, let's try this. Here, I have a picture of Maggie the Wonder Dog, my favorite and yours. Let's go ahead and add us a circle. To here, I'm going to make the circle bigger. I'm going to add a little bit of opacity. And if I wanted to punch out a picture of Maggie here into a circle, how would I do that? Everybody on this call knows the answer. After I have centered my circle with the opacity so I can see where it's at, I set the opacity back up. I right click over here and I set an alpha mat. Right? Everybody knows how to do that. Well, it's kind of a process, right? Here's an easier way. How about if we go to visual effects and we now go down to media mat. And I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to drop it on the shape. And what that does is essentially, as we can see on the visual properties, we've added a media mat effect, right? And it's an alpha mat. And you can change to all the various different mat types. You can change the intensity and ease it in and ease it out and all that good stuff. But notice what I didn't have to do was go through that whole rigmarole of uh, you know, uh, doing the track thing over here, I just specify I want this shape to be a media mat, and now I'm basically good to go. Okay, and I can do, you know, whatever you can with a track mat, just with that simple process and procedure. And I get access to all of the properties over here. You can add it as a preset. Okay, so here I have, I don't know, I'll call it an oval mat. So I've added it as a preset in my effects. Uh, let's see, what else? You can, of course, then animate it and let's bump this up a track. Oh, let's group it. Okay, just to keep them both together. Uh, just like other track mats, oh, let's just stretch this out. Okay. So it is a track mat, and whatever is underneath the track mat and the object that is directly underneath it will show through. Okay, so that's kind of sweet. Much better, much easier. OK, 
Okay. Uh, speaking of groups, here's another one that I really kind of like. What we now have is if I open up this group, watch what happens. It opens up in a tab over here. So now I can work with all the assets in the group, essentially in place in time, but on their own timeline. Right, so I don't have any other crap and stuff on top or in the way or anything like that. I'm opening up the group in its own tab. And I can make any changes I want. And when I close the group tab, that'll all be reflected in my project. So that's really kind of handy. It's almost like some of the advanced editors use something called compositions, right? It's a way to create pretty complex stuff by grouping things up and then not having to deal with them all on the main timeline but rather opening them up individually making any changes right and then closing the group and it's reflected in the project yeah so I like those uh, let's see what else one more this is one of my personal favorites in Camtasia, if you go to the library and, and the assets that you get from TechSmith, or if you go to the TechSmith asset site and download things like lower thirds, right, and you add them to the timeline, here I just have the lower thirds that come with the Camtasia library, and I've dropped one on the timeline. So if we scrub this, you'll see that, oh, that's a neat looking lower third. I like it. Want to modify it for assets from TechSmith. If you click on these, you may have noticed and loved, like I do, this thing called Quick Properties. So instead of opening up a group and having to double click the text and uh, you know doing all kinds of hoop jumping to get to each asset in this group, Quick Properties lets you just boom right here. You know, and in fact it has a sample here your name. Change it here and it changes the asset. You can change colors, right? You can do just all kinds of stuff. Change colors here. So bada boom, quick and dirty, you create yourself a brand new asset. Well, in Camtasia 2021, I'm happy to announce that now TechSmith has provided an interface to allow us access to creating our own group properties. So here I have just a couple of assets. I got me a text box, I got me another text box, and I have a shape. Right? Watch what happens when I group these up now. Let's group them. Right click group. I now have a quick properties tab. And you want to change the shape color? Not a problem. You want to change your text? Also not a problem. And all of the properties of the quick properties are basically accessible to us. You change the fonts, you can do you know all the stuff that you want to do. Uh, it actually gets a little bit better than that. I don't know if we'll have time to get into it tonight. Let's see. But you can also edit group properties in a couple of ways and I think I'll dive into this more in a future session but you can give properties to each asset in the group so this is a call out but if I wanted to you know give it a different name or description you could do that uh, if I wanted to say your name here you can do that and subtitle or something like that I don't know any descriptive stuff you want to do there uh, then on the quick properties shut that down see it gives you what it is you're supposed to put in there and there's a few other features and stuff like that that is in the editing version of quick properties actually I uh, think yeah, that's about it for tonight I'll probably do a special webinar when it actually releases when I have release code okay Excellent. All right, everybody, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.